Okay, question two is also going to be statistics, but it's going to look a little bit more at variation and standard deviation. So let's take a look. It says, learners who scored a mark below 50% in a mathematics test were selected to use a computer-based program as part of an intervention strategy. On completing the program, these learners wrote a second test to determine the effectiveness of the in intervention strategy. The mark as a percentage scored by 15 of these learners, that means there's a total of 15 learners, in both tests is given in the table below. Okay, so these learners wrote test one, and then teachers decided that because none of them got above 50%, they needed to go and do this computer thingy. And then the learners wrote another test, test two, and obviously the teachers now want to compare the marks and see how effective the computer thingy was in improving their marks. Okay, so 2.1 says determine the equation of the least squares regression line. Now remember guys, that is given to us as the predicted y value is equal to a plus bx. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator. First we need to assign variables. So I'm going to say that test 1 is x and test 2 is y. Okay, so what you do is you pull up your calculator, you say mode setup, two for stats, and now because we're dealing with the y equals a plus bx, you'll see that at option two, okay? So now we have two columns, x and y. So under the x column, you will enter all of the marks for test one, and you follow each mark by an equals. So we'll say 10 equals, and you see it goes to the next row, and you carry on adding or enter entering the marks. So 18 equals 23 equals 24 equals and just make sure you are entering the right marks okay because if you don't it really could mess with all of your data points and I know that this is time consuming guys but it will make your lives so much easier okay so now if you look the number of rows I've entered is 15 make sure you have 15 because there are 15 learners so now you go to top of the Y column and you enter in test two's mark. So 33 and you follow each mark with an equals. Okay, so guys, when you're doing this, it actually allows you to calculate so many different things for each of these variables. You can calculate the standard deviation, the mean, the correlation. It really is helpful. So make sure you know how to use the stats function on your calculator. Okay, so once you finish entering, you should have 15 numbers for each column. Okay, so now you press AC, which means you've stored those things in the calculator. You press shift, one for stats. Now we're dealing with some form of regression, so five for regression. And there you see you've got your A and B values. So I'm going to press one for A equals, and I get 12,44. So that means that the predicted Y value is equal to 12,44 plus go back to your calculator shift one for stats five for regression and two for b equals and you get 0 comma nine eight whoopsie nine eight x okay so that basically shows the relationship between test one's marks and test two's marks okay so 2.2 says a learner's mark for the first test, which is X, was 15 out of a maximum of 50 marks. 2.1.1 or 2.2.1 says write down the learner's mark as a percentage. Okay, guys, you've all worked out a percentage for a test. You take your mark that you got out of the total for the test and you times by 100. Okay, and that is going to give us 30%. Okay, so... The learner's mark for the first test was 30%. So now 2.2.2 says predict the learner's mark for the second test, which was our Y value that we allocated. Give your answer to the nearest integer. Guys, very important. We need to round up or down to the nearest kind of whole number. Okay, so remember we said Y is equal to 12,44 plus 0,98x, but remember this learner got 30 for their first test. So now we plug that into the calculator, whoopsie daisy, and we say 12,44 plus 0,98 times 30, 
And that is going to give us 41,84. But remember, guys, nearest integer. So we look at this number. It's greater than 5, so we round up, and it is 42%. Okay, so very easy to use your prediction line. So 2.3 now says, for the 15 learners above, the mean mark of the second test is 45,67%. And the standard deviation is 13,88%. Luckily for you, they didn't make you calculate this. They gave it to you themselves. The teacher discovered that he forgot to add the marks of the last question, whoopsie, to the total mark of each of these learners. All of the learners scored, scored full marks in the last question. Okay, guys, that full marks means that every single learner got the same mark. Let's call it Z. They got exactly the same mark for that last question. Okay, so when the marks of the last question are added, which means that we're adding the exact same mark every time, that Z or whatever you want to call it. When they're added, the new mean mark is... 50,67%. Okay, so this is mean 1 and this is mean 2. Okay, so 2.3.1 says what is the standard deviation after the marks for the last question are added to each learner's total? Okay, so I'm going to try and draw this for you guys. Remember you have your normal distribution. The mean sits right in the middle and then on either side, there is the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus one standard deviation. And your normal distribution looks like this. So the majority of learners marks sit within one standard deviation of the mean. OK, so now if I'm adding the same value to every single score, do you guys agree with me that the mean is going to increase by that number, and so are both of these values. So if I do that, it's going to shift to the new values, and our normal distribution is going to shift to the right as well. It's going to shift up. So guys, remember, with your standard deviation, they're going to take every learner's mark, and they're going to subtract it from the mean, or subtract the mean from it, the same average from every learner's mark, and then they're going to square it, and that's how you find the standard deviation. So if I'm adding a mark to every single mark, obviously the mean is going to get bigger, it's going to shift, but so is the standard deviation, the difference from every learner's mark from the mean. If we're adding the same mark to every single mark, it's obviously going to shift with it. So guys, standard deviation, if you're adding the same thing to every data point, standard deviation is not going to change. Standard deviation is just showing how all the marks are spread about that average value. So if we have our normal distribution around the mean and the mean increases, we're still going to have a normal distribution. It's going to shift all uniformly. OK, so the standard deviation stays the same. It's not theta. It's sigma. OK. It's going to stay the same. But now here it says, what is the total mark of the last question? So that's where the means come in. OK, guys. So if I'm adding the same mark to every single learner, OK, so every single learner has the same mark added to it. So obviously their marks are all going to shift up by that same mark. So the mean is going to shift up by that same mark. So to find the mark for the last question, say mark for last question is equal to if we add the same mark to every single learner, obviously the mean is going to be added by every single learner. So we're going to have mean 2 minus mean 1, which was 50,67% minus 45% comma six seven percent let me just double check yeah perfect okay which gives us five percent so the mark for that last question is five percent so it comes up to here this illustration here if every single mark gets an addition of the same value that left off question your graph is obviously going to shift by the same value okay so the mean is going to increase by that value, which is why we took the difference of the two means and we got 5% for the last question. Okay, guys, so just remember, standard deviation 
is not affected. If you add exact same mark to every data point, standard deviation is not going to be affected. Obviously, the average of all of the marks, the mean, will increase by that additional mark. Okay, so just make sure that you understand what they're asking you. Sit, think, and write. Okay, and that is question two.